What's up, everybody? This is Jason at Go Power Sports with Mini Biking Ain't Easy, a Go Power Sports podcast. Today, as always, I'm with Zane, my main man Bernie. Yo, yo. <laughs> and our special guest today, Chris Roby of hey Team guys. Live. What's How are up? Yes. I can Good applause. You are this on never that. happens. Sometimes it's delayed. You're on the ball today. This is, I'm trying. Yes, I'm, I'm trying. very impressed. So what's up, Chris? What have you been doing today? Uh, I've uh, been meeting with schools, and on a personal level, I got a good workout in today, nice. which is very important for mental health for me, and yep. so got to do that. A lot of time with schools, this is our busy time of year, and meeting with administrators and counselors and teachers, and so lots of meetings, but all cool. really, really fun stuff. So mm. let's back it up. Yeah. You are Chris of Teen Life. That's right. So let's describe Teen Life. Yeah. So Teen Life's a nonprofit that's based in the Fort Worth, Tarrant County area of Texas, and we provide support groups for high school and middle school students on school campuses. And so these support groups support the well-being and mental health of uh, adolescents in times that are really, really tough to be a teenager. And so we all need a safe place to talk, and this is a place where students can come and talk about what's important to them in a non- non-judgmental setting. Thing. But the really cool part is it's all run by community volunteers. And so it's people like, like you guys, like anyone who cares about a teenager that uh, wants to be on a school campus, we train, we offer support, and we get them on campus. Only schools? That's where Teen Life only mainly, lives? Mainly, yeah, mainly schools. We do support drug rehabs. We will support after-school programs. We'll, we'll, we'll support recovery programs like AANA or Celebrate Recovery at churches. Um, really anywhere that they need that support element, uh, especially preventatively, like what we do. And if you get into mental health uh, jargon, what we do is preventative. We're trying not to clean the mess up after it happens. We want to prevent the mess from happening to begin mm, with. And okay. so it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit different approach to mental health supports. It's been around a while, but still not a lot of people are talking about it that way. Yeah. So your most optimal school, tell me what this looks like. Are you guys there Monday through Friday as your own I guess you're taking a classroom and mm-hmm. you have a counselor in there and anyone who's invited just comes in. Like, what does it actually look like in the most optimal sense? Yeah, yeah. So typically we work with the school counselor. So if you go on a school campus and you want to know what's happening on a school and kind of know who it needs to help, the school counselor, they have their finger on the pulse of the social emotional needs of the student body. Specifically, we'll work with what's called intervention specialists or behavior counselors. These are the ones who have licenses. These are LPC, like licensed counselors, therapists, trauma therapists, sometimes they're social workers, LCDCs, uh, people who have letters after the name that I don't have. <laughs> um, and so they they know, hey, these are the kids who've gone through trauma. These are the kids who have some kind of, we would say as a trauma-informed term, a kid from a hard place. And so these are kids who who really have had all kinds of issues happen in their life. And so they'll identify students who need that and they will bring them into the groups and get consents and they will come and they will start group one. And so we meet with them once a week for eight weeks, typically. Yeah. And so um, there's a lot of heady research stuff that the reasoning behind that eight weeks um, and program design, but it really is a place where they can come and during the school day, maybe miss a class, get pulled out, uh, maybe lunch or whatever it is, like a uh, advisory period, they'll come and be a part of that group. And, and what, what you have to remember, a lot of these kids are kids who don't have uh, a lot of social interactions, a lot of friends, maybe a lot of reason to come to school. Um, I don't know if, how your relationship with school was with growing up, but a lot of kids um, skip a lot of school. Mm. And what we find is a lot of kids who are in a teen life group will not skip that day. So maybe they are truant. They have all kinds of problems coming to school. They are going to be coming to school that day, uh, no matter what. And so it kind of gets them on that track of having a reason to actually come to school because mm. showing, someone's showing up for them. Nice. I have a couple of questions yeah. about teen life and kind of about why is there such a need for these kind of, I guess, preventative measures, or preventative mm-hmm. mental health measures, uh, especially for high school students. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to back up because um, there might be some people who are like, hey, this is a mini biking podcast. How are we tied <laughs> into uh-huh. uh, teen life? And yeah. I just wanted to talk a little bit about 
how does teen life fit in with Go Power Sports and why is that a thing? So uh, a long time ago, this actually as a result of a different administration, if you uh. want to say it that way. <laughs> um, my predecessor, a guy named Ricky Lewis, um, who was my boss when I first came on to Teen Life, gosh, 11 years ago now, developed a relationship with uh, Tim Yoakum, who's uh, one of the owners here at Go Power Sports. As Ricky left, he passed that relationship off to me as I took over Teen Life, and me and uh, me and Tim uh, really developed a great relationship where I would really just come to his office, and two hours would go by, and we realized we'd talked about everything and solve the world's problems and all those kinds of things. And there was something about what we were doing that I felt like Tim really resonated with, and he just had a lot of questions about. And the more that he dug into what we did and how it worked, he really felt like it aligned with the values of this company, of making sure that those in the community had what they needed, especially adolescents. And so our missions really aligned a lot. And, you know, so much has happened over the last few years. But what's been really cool about our relationship with Go Power Sports is that it continues to grow. Right. When you are a nonprofit, you know, there's fundraising relationships where you're always having to ask. You're always, ha and that's never been the case. It's always been like, Go Power Sports is always asking, how can we help? How can we help? And the values of the company and what, what you guys are all about align with kind of what we are about with teenagers. And it's been just an incredible relationship for, you know, seven, eight years now. It's been neat because as, as GPS has grown, so have we. <laughs> and, and it's been pretty neat to kind of see that partnership grow over time. And then we'll talk about this in a little while about the, the raffle. And as I talk to people in the community, the this has been one of the more fun relationships to talk about because yeah. because they're like, mini bikes and what like like that doesn't make any sense and that the and it's almost to an absurd nature. Yeah. And I love to be able to talk to people about that. Like, no, this is this is how it's done. Nice. <laughs> if you want to know how it's done, this is how it's done. And mm. so uh, it's a really special relationship. Why do you think the kind of interventions that you're talking about and the kind of preventative group structure, mm -hmm. uh, why is that something that is really important for students, mm -hmm. especially now? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd invite our y'all's listeners to think back when you were a teenager and if you were ever unfairly in your mind categorized or been told that you couldn't do something or that you fit in a, an at-risk at category. Teenagers in the traditional sense have always been talked about at, at risk. That's an at-risk kid over there, right? So you always have to put yourself in that kid's shoes. Like, like what if you were categorized by, you know, by some action, by the color of your skin, by their background, by something that either was, was or was not in your control? When we start to talk about prevention, we're trying to look at all those factors and think about, all right, a kid from a hard place, which like I said, that's how we talk about kids who have experienced trauma. What is it that they actually need to be able to access the resources in their community? And so many, what you find is so many kids from hard places don't really have a lot of resources. And that's a lot of reason why they are in the position that they're at. They don't really know who to ask to help. They don't have anyone looking out for them. And so they're going to do what seems most natural or most advantageous to, to help them survive. That doesn't make them a bad kid. <laughs> and so when we talk about prevention, we're trying to get out in front and realize, hey, these things are at play. And so we need to provide a place where we can go onto the campus and to where they are, we're not asking them to go anywhere. We're not asking them to make an appointment. We're not asking them to pay for it, which is a great reason we had this partnership with, with Go Power and other businesses is that we're able to provide the resources so they don't have to pay for it. And we're gonna come and meet you where you are and ask you questions that make sense to you and help you get out in front of your problems. What differentiates what we do from a counseling, which we are big fans of counseling, counseling will dig in the past a lot more. We say, what's going on today? What could be different or better in the future? So we're talking about today mm. and down the road. And so, and that way it, it, it's prevention, is trying to say, okay, maybe today is horrible. Maybe you made a, a slew of bad decisions, maybe were or were not in your control, but okay, we know out of it from a scale of zero to 10, you're a one today, great. Let's get you to a three. Let's kind of move you up that scale. And so that's kind of what that looks like with our viewpoint on preventative side. That's what kind of makes things a little bit different. And then ideally in our groups, we're able to identify kids who need more help than what we can provide. I can't tell you how many kids who have had a suicide outcry in my, in my group. I've had kids leave stuff behind, literally saying, I'm going to kill myself tonight, send their name to it and leave the room. Okay, let's get them the help they need. Right. And so, which I'm kind of glossing past that. I mean, they were obviously in that moment, very heavy kids who need significantly more help feel safe enough to ask for that help in that moment. And that's where we feel like what we're doing is so powerful because they feel safe enough to ask when maybe otherwise they weren't feeling that safe. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, 
the fact that you guys can build that trust mm -hmm. and you can give them someone that they can talk to about that. There's a lot more awareness about the role that mental health plays in like our physical health and also just how we Absolutely. interact with the world. But I think it's important for people to know that like they can also go and talk to someone about it because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times it still is like this. Well, no, no, it's like something's wrong with your brain. Mm -hmm. Like you need to get, and it's like, I'm, I'm very comfortable talking about like, I have benefited greatly from therapy right. and from being in positions where it's like, I can talk to someone and be like, Hey, I'm not doing great. Mm -hmm. So, right. especially for kids in that liminal state, mm -hmm. it's very difficult, right, for them to find someone that they can talk to and that they can trust with the information they're giving. Mm -hmm. That it's not going to be somehow used against them later, or they're not going to be told, "Oh, you're a crybaby," or right. "Oh, what do you have to be sad about?" Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's like that's how they're 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 there. They're at the verge, you know. And you make a great point that folks are more willing to talk about it now and bring that up, and and you know we'll, we'll move on to much more fun topics as we move along here. But the whole idea of actually talking about mental health is a it's is a pretty recent development, and it's no secret that teenagers will talk about that. But where the gap exists is access to services. So I can talk all day long about how depressed I am, or how anxious I am, or how I might do something to hurt myself, but the gap to get myself the actual help that I need, that's the problem. And that's that's the space that we're filling to be able to say, all right, let's, let's get you into this preventative space where you can actually talk about this and then we can get you the help you need, but at least you can feel safe enough to come here. We'll, we'll sometimes call it a mental health triage where yeah. they are coming in we're kind of figuring out what's happening and we can refer them on to the places they need to go. And so it's a different different kind of space that we're operating in, but it sure is a whole lot of fun. Yeah, and it's mm. important. I mm -hmm. mean, that's like the the stuff you guys are providing. It's I'm glad you're where you're at. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm glad you guys are so supportive for sure. <laughs> I would feel like there wouldn't be enough counselors because I feel like there'd be an influx of kids. And is it like one or two counselors per school per Pretty much. day? Pretty much. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Now you've got different kinds of counselors. You have your traditionally have been called guidance counselors. We call not professional counselors on on campuses. Those are the ones who are kind of working with schedules and academics, those kinds of things. Your social, emotional, mental health counselors, those are the ones you will see less of. Mm. And those are the ones who are needed more and more and more on campuses. So you'll have one or two for a campus with 3,000 kids. Okay. And so that's just not fair. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, the, the numbers just don't work. For all. anyone. No, for <laughs> yeah, for anyone. Exactly. And so so when we go to a counselor and say, hey, we, we, we're able to times your efforts by 10 just by one group, they're like, let's go, let's do it, right? So we can see 10 kids when they can see one in an hour. Yeah. And so that, that's where it's a really effective for them in our, in our groups. So now you're these eight-week cohorts. Mm -hmm. So is that usually kind of the optimal group size is like 10 students? At the most, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we go over 10, we call that a classroom. If we yeah. go under two, we call that one-on-one. -on -one. And so we're anywhere between three and 10. Um, six to eight, we say is our sweet spot. Okay. Um, gotcha. Mainly because that's the level at which, you know, humans talk. Mm. <laughs> when you get over about 10 people, yeah. people who are introverts like me, I can slip into the shadows <laughs> and not be seen. <laughs> <laughs> and not be heard from. And then your extroverts take over and all that kind of stuff. And that's no different from a group of teenagers. And so we try to keep that in that range where they'll actually feel safe to talk no matter who. Mm -hmm. And if we talk about scalability as, you know, as, as we've grown, you've grown, could you say how many schools you were 10 years ago to mm -hmm. what you are now? Yeah, I mean, years ago, we were really only on a handful of campuses, probably, you know, 10 or 20 different groups that we were doing in a given school year, minimal number of groups. But the year before COVID hit, we were up to 205 groups that year, um, just that school year alone and uh, over 1,500 students with almost 100 volunteers. And it was kind of that peak time for us. And then literally what we call the spring break that never ended in 2020 really kind of put a damper on that because when you run a school-based service like what we we do and schools say sorry no one can come it kind of puts a damper on things and so yeah. we really went from our peak to almost zero overnight with with covid and so really we have been building back our capacity ever since then and last year we got up to uh, about 140 groups nice. so we're, we're coming back up to work from where we were but it's been slow going it, there's so many factors when it comes to this because of all those relationships with schools we've built they're gone now um, wow. because school staff turned over so much and if you what you read in the news about what's happening at schools and education is true. There are lots of teachers that have quit, lots of counselors that have quit. And so just brand new administrations, new staff, it just takes, it takes time to rebuild after a catastrophe like that. But last year we saw almost 1,200 students. And so we, we're nice. getting back to that peak again nice. that we were. It's just been slow going. So and everyone's been a little slow coming back from it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Especially anyone who's in school-based services or working with students, it's changed it for, for everybody. Yeah. And so um, gratefully... The need is so great, and the, the doors are opening back up for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. So we're going to take a quick break. I want to advise everyone to stay tuned because you're going to find out how many bikes saved all these lives. <laughs> That's right. Next. <laughs> Get ready because it's that time of the year again. What's up race team? It's Jason at Go Power Sports, your one-stop destination for all things mini bike and go-kart related. We've had two incredible years of the Go Power Sports 180 mini bike race and this year we're gearing up to make it even bigger. Mark your calendars for November 11th, 2023 because you won't want to miss the third annual Go Power Sports 180 mini bike race. Whether you are a seasoned racer, or a newbie, this is your chance to showcase your skills, tune up your mini bikes, and join us for the adrenaline pumping race. Your goal is to have one mini bike cover the most ground in 180 minutes. So, are you ready to feel the thrill of the race? Join us on November 11th for the third annual Go Power Sports 180 mini bike race. Can't wait to see you there. And we're back. So we just did uh, 10 raffle bikes mm -hmm. for Teen Life. Now, do you have a favorite out of these 10 raffle bikes? Yeah, I knew this question was coming, and that's a really tough one. For me, it was the green Colorado bike. Yeah. Boom, I, boom. I love. That's the one. The, oh, gosh. Just, I mean, partly I've, I've got a deep affinity for Colorado. Mm -hmm. There was a point in my career before nonprofit that I would go to Colorado every single summer, and we nice. would bring groups of teenagers. We'd go in the backcountry, and I just love it. I think a lot of the filmography cinematography that was built around that bike. I think I got a connection with that. And if I remember right, my boys got to come up and uh, be a part of that drawing. Or maybe some of the promo for it. We actually came up and saw it and looked yeah. at it. And so yeah. so my boys loved it, so I love it. So, yeah, okay. for sure. You know, that one was special because that one made the trip out to Colorado with us. We had our buddies' cars and cameras. Yeah. They yep. helped us promote it. But I just loved the scenery of it because we rolled that thing out. So our little house that we just camp at, mm -hmm. it has this huge deck on the back. It has this babbling brook going down or this river that's right outside Super the back. Super picturesque, man. And there was like a rainbow. Like we showed up like it had just finished raining. So there was a rainbow in the back. And I was like, oh, man, this place is beautiful. I've never fancied myself a whole lot into the motorsports side, but I love off-road. And I love getting back and, you know, where people can't go and yeah. that bike was definitely put together more for that, more of an off-road yeah. setup and bigger tires. And yeah. so I pictured myself taking off and no one ever finding me for a while. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> back, back in around. the back country. Yeah. So, so I think there was some emotional connection with that bike for sure. Oh. Like, like I, I, I just, I, I love your imagination. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And, and this, uh, it was the green on chrome, right? If I yeah. remember right. Yeah. Oh. Green, chrome and bronze. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. And that's something I can say about this, the raffle bike, the creativity that went th through every single one of those bikes. There's a lot of connection to me on that. I'm just, every time y'all would call me say, oh, this is what we're doing next, you know, Purple Rain, yeah. or um, just the different kinds of chrome and things that I didn't understand as kind of an outsider to the culture and the community. I learned so much about how every one of these bikes has a story behind them. There was something about them that some part or something that was new that I didn't fully understand. And, and you guys would start talking about it and I would kind of gloss over as I don't know what you're talking about. But <laughs> but but one of the things I love is being around people who are so into what they do yeah. <laughs> and can talk about it and assume that I know and that's fun. that's great with me because yeah. I'm, I'm just here to learn, you know. Yeah. But um, this community and, and just going into research and looking at like Facebook groups and what people are into with the mini bike community, this campaign, man, you t talk about learning about a whole uh, community of people who are so passionate about, yeah. about mini bikes and to be invited into that as yeah. a part of that was really, really cool. Yeah. I want to give a huge shout out to Taylor Yoakum. He, yes. So that was all from his head. Like we would throw ideas out there and he would kind of show us different color schemes, but that was 100% Taylor. Taylor's brain, Taylor made. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to you, Taylor. Yeah. Great job. Incredible bud. work. Oh yeah. No, it, killed it. Killed it on every one of those, man. Mm -hmm. So with each of these bikes, we essentially, if people don't know, from 2022 to 2023, April to April, we raffled off 10 mini bikes and then all the proceeds went to Teen Life. Mm -hmm. So 10 bikes, a whole year of raffle bikes, all that money. So then goes to Teen Life. My question is, how else does Teen Life uh, also gain money or get mm -hmm. donations? Yeah. Uh, is there any, th any other fundraisers going on? Well, to back up real quick about, about this particular campaign, I remember you guys talking about this with me before the campaign happened. And, and when you've been in nonprofit long enough, people talk about different ways they want to help you out. And 
y'all told me this and you told me some of your goals around it. And I was like, no, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's not, not going to happen. happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, cause that, because it seems so ambitious, you know, it's, it, it, and, and not, it wasn't necessarily doubting you guys, but it was like, like this, what you guys are talking about doing here is really special and really impactful. And like our little organization, why would you care that much about us? But then I got a call from Tim saying, Hey, we're going to be out of pay in April with our first bike. I'm like, Oh, this is happening. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually yeah. going to happen, you know? And so I was floored. One of the cool things about the GPS relationship with Teen Life is it shows how different businesses can be creative with their fundraising about the things that they care about. Because the fact that we're talking about how absurd it is that motorbikes and team mental health are going together, I think that's the point, is that it doesn't necessarily have to dovetail perfectly. It's what does your organization care about? Like, like what cause are you guys into? And making sure you invest fully in that cause with what you do, with your time, with your energy, with your creativity, and this campaign really uh, encapsulates so much of that creativity because every time I would talk to you guys about it, y'all were having a blast with it. Yeah. You were having a lot of fun with it. It wasn't oh, like, yeah. oh, we got to do this. Like I genuinely sensed that it was an all-in yeah. kind of thing from a company-wide standpoint. And so there are other companies that do similar things. We have a company who partners with us who donates a full day worth of business to us. Nice. And so, and it's a lot of money. It's a, it's a massive, massive company. And they just say this day, everything's going to this, to teen life. And, nice. and there's another organization that'll split between us. Teen life, gratefully, we can provide everything we provide for free because of the generosity of our community. Nice. And so a lot of my time is spent building relationships, talking about what we do, making sure people understand what we do and don't do and the need that we fulfill. And typically, if I can sit and talk to someone about what we do, they're, they're all in on it. And we have a big fundraiser that we do every October that we'll, that's coming up about six weeks that we're working really hard to prepare for, that we raise nice. a lot of money at as well. And then there's you know community stakeholders like grants and churches and you know, grant makers and churches that invest with us as well. But gratefully at this point, you know, we're not having to take a bunch of government grants and loans and all the crazy stuff you have to do. We are sustained by the generosity of our community. And we're really grateful for that. That's cool that you say community because, yeah, for all the donations for these bikes, you know, people buying raffle tickets, it's part of the mini bike community that really jumped in. Like, you are right. Once you get to tell them, talking to people about, hey, you have a chance to win a mini bike. But if you don't, your $10 is going to go towards helping a teen's life, you know, get turned around today. And everyone just didn't walk walk away they're like yeah i can give 10 bucks how are you know venmo mm -hmm. you here's ten dollars right here we we're out in vegas those people had cash out that you already tugged at their heart even if they won they're like you know what just keep it and we had a few people who didn't pick up the phone call whenever they want a bike <laughs> mm -hmm. they just truly wanted to give yeah. we had Dottie who won like our fourth bike out mm -hmm. of rockwood she just wanted to give she didn't even keep the bike so that's awesome that the mini bike community wants to hit, see these team community grow as well mm -hmm. yeah even the people who won the sema bike he said he bought tickets for every single one just because he he looked up what teen life was and he loved the yeah he loved the message i, I mean like what's not to like uh -huh. it does kind of align everyone has either been a teenager or knows a teenager and people who have not been a teenager are probably 10 years old and younger <laughs> right like, or 12 right. years old and younger yeah it's something that everyone can get behind mm -hmm. and i'm sure everyone can be like oh you know i wish i had had someone who'd been right. there to right. just like kind of walk me through this and give me even just like to give me a spot where I can just chill out for mm -hmm. a little bit before I go back out into the craziness of the world. Man. And some of us who were lucky had one adult who did that for us. If we think back, there was someone who did show up for us and in a tough time. And I can think of a guy that was there when things were kind of an upheaval in my life and mm -hmm. how important that was. He wasn't running a support group, but that was a trusted adult. And that's part of our mission now is that we, we want to connect teenagers to trusted adults and resources so that no teenager has to feel alone. Yeah. And that's, that's how we talk about things now. Is This is bigger than support groups. This is really making sure that a teenager has what they need. Whether or not, if you're listening to this and you're like, eh, I couldn't run a support group or whatever, but what, what if you could be there for a teenager who doesn't really know what's happening with life? Because life is super confusing. No. <laughs> um, especially as a teenager with social media, all the things that are happening right now, I cannot imagine growing up right now. So, and having to deal with all that. Okay, so let's say someone hears this and, you know, it hits them right in the heart bone mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, I love this mission. How can people get involved? What's yeah. the way for people to get involved with you guys? So it's really simple now. It used to be really a lot more difficult. <laughs> and, and that you know, during the, the shutdown days of COVID, we're like, we need to do something here <laughs> and, and make sure we have make this more accessible. But now uh, anyone can go on and uh, run a background check and become a trained facilitator for Teen Life. It's all online now. 
It's actually super inexpensive. It's 50 bucks to get trained and that $50 helps kind of cover our costs on the platform and all the things we have to do to invest in making sure that thing runs well, background checks, all that good stuff. But yeah. anyone who is anywhere in the country, if there's like a high school or middle school close to you, maybe it was your alma mater, maybe it's somewhere that you graduated from and whether or not you had a good experience there or not, it doesn't really matter, but maybe you want to reinvest in your community and you're like, yeah, I, I've got an hour a week I can run on a group. Our job at Teen Life is to train you and help place you. And so if you're in Tennessee or Kansas or Washington State, whatever, and you've got a school right around the corner from you and you're like, hey, I want to serve, you can call us up and we can help place you in that school. We, we know the people to talk to. That's part of what we developed over these years is knowing who do you talk to on that campus. If this is something that you want to do or maybe you just want to get trained just to be a better helper for a teenager. That's a big thing that we can do it, through that training. We, we have a lot of people who will go through the training and say, you know, I don't think I can run a group, but I feel like a lot, I'm a lot more equipped to, do, to, to work with a teenager. We teach you how to be a good active listener and most importantly, not be an advice giver. Now that sounds really weird, but teenagers don't need your advice. You don't need my advice. Right. They need someone to listen to. And so we teach you how to be a curious listener and to be almost a coach more than a teacher or a parent. Mm -hmm. And so that's the whole thought behind being a facilitator for a teen life group and also, also just being a better helper for a teenager. So I'm just curious, what would a bottleneck or what is your biggest bottleneck? Because I, I can see three. Could it be access into a school? Could it be needing volunteers or is it needing money? Like are any of those three your, your toughest bottleneck? Yeah, I would say the, the last two tend to be your biggest bottlenecks. Any, any nonprofit is, is looking for additional funding and more resources, but so much of it for us is the people. And so you talked about having two counselors on a school of 3,000 kids. Think about how many students we could serve if we had the people to do that with. And so the investments we're making at Teen Life are trying to bring on additional staff to just work with volunteers, just to make sure, like, as I say, you got trained as a volunteer. I want to make sure I've got someone on my team who their job 100% is to care for those volunteers, make sure they, they're supported, have what they need, they're trained. And so volunteers is our big thing right now is making sure we have the, enough people to be on these campuses because where we have to say no at Teen Life, it's not the schools. The schools say yes. The schools are asking and asking and asking. We have to tell the schools no oh, wow. when we don't have enough people. Okay. Wow. And so that's where it gets to be a little bit more painful is whenever we got to say, hey, we don't have anyone for you. Oh, wow. And so that's that's a hard thing to have to say. And that's not we're not unique in that space with nonprofit. I mean, we're all hurting for people. But especially um, when it comes to going on school campuses, I think a lot of people don't think that's something they can do. It seems so intimidating, and it is. I've led, I've literally had hundreds of groups in my career. Every time I walk in that first group, I'm, I feel a little, a little nauseous. <laughs> a little like, like, what am I getting into this time? That little PTSD yeah. from the first time you walked into yeah, high school. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like five minutes in, like, we got this, let's go. It's it's awesome. And so it's yeah. it's one of the most fun things I get to do personally. That's why I'm passionate about it. I still, I still lead groups every week. Um, that's nice. a big part of what I do. I'll start my first one Friday of this nice. week for the school year. Yeah. And so awesome. at a little alternative school and I know it's going to be chaos, but it's going to be great. It's going to be, a, it's going to be a great experience for sure. And for those driving, cause we're definitely going to blast, you know, your website and your social media stuff down oh, in the description or it up here, up mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. but for our Spotify listeners, where can they go to get more information or, or to sign up to be a volunteer? Yeah. So teenlife.ngo is our website. And I did not pronounce that incorrectly is teenlife.ngo non-governmental organization is an actual website. Gotcha. And there's still spam filters to this day that catch it. They don't like it, but it is <laughs> it's a legit website. <laughs> um, and you can go on there and there's a really clear directions on you click support groups and you can find out more about how you can get gotcha. trained as well. We also offer other resources. We have our own podcast at Teen Life and the Teen Life podcast is helping the helpers. And so it's basically this idea that anyone who's in a helping position with a teenager, whether you're a parent, a coach, a mentor, a pastor, a teacher, a counselor, you should be able to benefit from our podcast. They're short podcasts. They're about 20, 25 minutes a week. And we cover a tip, a topic, and a trend. Sometimes it's what's going on in pop culture, maybe something that's happening, or maybe just a trend in teen culture we want to talk about. We try to talk about it from a pretty high view um, because we have such a, a wide variety of listeners. Sometimes it's something about a, a faith community. Sometimes it's about something that's happening at school. It's something we've been doing for a really long time. We have a long, long backlog of episodes. Uh, we've been doing this since 2015, nice. <laughs> okay. actually. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's the best kept secret of teen life, unfortunately, I guess. But um, it's just something we've been doing for a long time. Well, I hey, really if enjoy you, doing. If you're, a, if you're someone who drives a lot or has a long commute, 
Go check out Teen Life. Uh, no, helping, help, the helping the helpers. Helping the helpers. Helping right? the helpers. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah. Teen Life podcast. It's really easy. It's on our website. When you when you go to Teen gotcha. Life NGO, there's a podcast link, or you can search it in any of your favorite Spotify, Spotify Apple, yeah, all those yeah, businesses. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. Cool, cool, man. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm going to be listening to on my way to work tomorrow. Oh, man. I, I mean, you guys are professional podcasters, so I'm really intimidated by, by sharing that with you guys because I, I, I oh, this incredible setup. With, I, we don't have all this, guys. Like, it's not going to be this awesome. It's all full of. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all this, full is, full. This, is, this is all, like, dressing. This is all just, like, really pretty fondant. And then, like, underneath the cake is just the ser- series of, like, Betty Crocker. Yeah, like, well, I mean. <laughs> it's I, a I, bunch I, of guys on mini bikes. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> At the end of the day, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not quite as fancy as this, but we we definitely enjoy it, and it's oh, no. uh, well produced and all that. So I'm intimidated because now I'm like, we've been doing this for under a year, and now the fact that you're like, oh yeah, we've been doing it for eight years. I'm like, man, you got <laughs> like, I need to pick your brain on how to do this thing, man. All, all I ask is, don't listen to the early episodes because they were horrible. <laughs> oh, I still say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I still say that. Yeah. If you're ever in podcasting, just just dump the first year because it's like. <laughs> Which is our entire existence. Yeah. So. Well, from my, you guys are much more better resource than I. We were literally like hauling gear from place to pay, place, and oh, yeah. sound sound quality was horrible, and I was probably mumbling through my words and all that. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah. but no, y'all, y'all, have, y'all oh no, we have, we've got we'll have some grace when we go back and listen to it. Right, or we'll yeah. just skip the first year of them. And That's so, right. Yeah, seven years of backlog. Right. Right. Yeah, it's different now. Maybe the first month is bad for y'all, but y'all are much better resource than we are. So y'all, y'all, nice. yeah. this is incredible. What are you guys at Teen Life? What are you excited for in the coming year? Do you guys have anything cool coming down the pipeline? Yes, and I, I hesitate to share this because it seems ultra nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we're listening. Well, you're already up my alley. <laughs> yes, do this. yes. So in nonprofit, kind of the gold standard is this thing called ev- being evidence based. Yeah, and so it's basically this idea that you are your program, what you do, is backed by data, is backed by scholarship, is backed by the learning community, and people can say, "Hey, bring them in," because they we actually studied these guys, and what they do works from a data standpoint. We see from a student starting. Point A to at group week one to week eight, we can measure progress, right? Okay. And so we have measured that in our own kind of internal measurement tools, and we we have proved efficacy on our own standards, which has been really exciting. Uh, but we're um, getting the chance to partner, and I won't say a whole lot of details just because there's still some things in the works. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but we're partnering with a major university here in the DFW area and basically standardizing all of our measurement tools where basically we're going to be able to partner with major school districts and measure from an academic standpoint the efficacy of our of our work. That's awesome. Um, and not only that, but also uh, creating what's called data sharing agreements with schools where we can measure attendance, grades, and referrals. So those are the three big, like every school wants to know that. Yeah. Are their grades getting better? Are they coming to school more? And are their disciplinary referrals going down? Oh, right. Okay. Gotcha. So those are the three big, like, so if a kid from a hard place, those are the three things you want to see go in the right direction. And so we've never been able to really partner with schools and say, hey, give us the numbers. Like if a kid goes through our group, they're making all C's or D's. And at the end of our group are making A's and B's. There could be something there, yeah. right? And so we have like true outcomes. And so yeah. we are working on starting to actually measure those in an official way and having school districts see us and say, yeah, we'll do that, um, nice. which is like crazy that, that, they're yeah. well, that they're willing to share that data with us. So that's something we're working on right now that we feel like in two or three years is going to yield a lot of dividends because people will see that and yeah. say, oh, we want that in our school and will really bring us a lot more towards becoming a, a valid uh, option for lots of I mean, schools all over the country. I mean, once people start seeing, like, yeah, like, you've run the gauntlet of the IRB, uh-huh. you should be good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're speaking my language, IRB. Yeah, that's the big thing that we're that we're working through right now, actually, is is, yeah. is, is that kind of stuff. And so, like I said, for, for your listeners, that might be super nerdy, but something we get really excited about, I think most of our jobs, we want something that validates that what we're doing is working. And yeah. nonprofit, that's data. And so we're really excited to be able to measure and say, yeah, this is working and, you know, Right now, we can prove that a student just in eight weeks is 20, 20% more hopeful about their future. It nice. might not seem like a lot, but statistically, it's off the charts yeah. to say 20% brighter hope oh. for the future. Yeah. Well, especially if they're starting it 
zero to five yeah. percent and mm-hmm. you're getting them to 20 that's a huge drive yeah exactly i mean just think about it if you had 20 percent higher hope for the future your decisions would look a lot different holy moly yeah mm-hmm. in my own life yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> and, that, and but that's right now with our own internal measurements that's what we measure i mean that's what that's little yeah. as that's true outcomes from our groups and so so we're really excited to be able to get that more of an official capacity and then also honestly just we're now that all of our stuff is online we're getting calls from all over the the country we're getting our seo google seo in line to where when someone searches teen support groups teen life is the first thing that pops up Good. and That's so awesome. so we're getting calls from all over the country saying hey this is what we've been looking for we have groups in california that are starting in the bay area just because they googled us and nice. so we're really excited about that this will not be just a texas thing in a few years and GPS is a big part of that for sure. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And you actually just linked up with something. I don't know if we can talk about this on camera, but because we're filming a video for that year end dinner mm-hmm. that you're talking about, and you linked up with someone that went through this a while ago. And we're also talking with a student that whose mom is going to become a counselor. So yeah. getting to see all the, the progress that kids make is. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And I hope once we get all those testimonies filmed in the next month or so, we'll be able to share some of that with your audience, just on some of the really cool uh, things that are happening in like specific communities. But also like I'm, we're about to interview, get students on camera that I worked with 10 years ago. Whoa. That are like growing up with have kids nice. now. And so we get to talk and, and I, I just messaged them out of the blue. I was like, Hey, do you want to talk? Like, yeah, let's do it. As kind of the old guy around, that feels pretty good to, to be able to, to know, Hey, there's students that that's, yeah. you know, this eight week thing that we did had a long, long term impact in their lives. You're, you're entering your Yoda phase now. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hair in the ears, all the stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's all, it's all there talking out. My words jumbled out of order and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. The nerd level of this podcast keeps raising yes <laughs> i know I, I i should have included that in my email like you can count on that with me I, for yeah. sure i, yeah. I usually <laughs> have to put a limiter on mine because i'm like yeah <laughs> so uh, this is like kind of a non sequitur now I but um I like this how do you feel about going 100 miles per hour on a mini bike it's terrifying but i have a story well i haven't done it i've, I've i think i've already alluded to this but when i was a kid my dad was in the military. We actually lived in Europe, in Germany. Okay. What's in Germany? The Autobahn. Autobahn, Yeah. The Autobahn. Yeah. And so if you've never been to to Germany, Europe, the Autobahn, I'm not sure about now, but 30 years ago when we lived there, it very much was what you thought it was, was a racetrack. Um, And when you went out there, you were kind of just at the mercy of everything else that was happening out there. There's no speed limits. And I remember driving with my dad and I was in the back seat and I heard him say, Chris, look, and by the time look got out of his mouth, there was a blur of red that f- flew by our car that was gone by the time he said look. Wow. And it was the motorcycle that was probably going 200, 220 miles an hour. Exhilarating. On, uh, yeah, on, on, <laughs> on the highway. Yeah. And just like I said, I was probably 10, 11 years old, but I remember that vividly of just like the power of this thing just flying. And we were going 80 at least. And And it was just. Soldiers leaving you as they whip right by. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. And so when when I saw that, I was like, I remember that vividly and thinking like, how how would it feel to be on something like that with that much power? Yeah. And trying to keep it under control, but just to be in the open air (laughs) at the same time. (laughs) Um, So how do I feel about it? Um, My wife. I talked to her about this. She works at Children's Medical Center, and she says, Chris, you have no comment on that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's, uh, it seems exhilarating. I'm not sure that I'll be the one doing it, but I will cheer on folks who can do that. I started this venture thinking that I was going to do this, but – and the boss is saying that with you coming on up and us trying to retire, you are not getting on that many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's there, there's some high stakes that are going on with those. But to be able to see someone yeah. who can do that and and just look cool while they're doing it, didn't yeah. bother them. Yeah. Yes. Just that's, look that's, really cool. Like, yeah, yeah. And I think I think I mean I think it's like being a baseball player and having a hundred mile an hour fastball from right, right at your head. You. Yeah. And you just get back in there. Who cares? Right. Right. <laughs> what? I mean, that's just that's the whole level of cool that yeah. I have yeah. lost in my life yeah. for sure. I don't know if I was ever there. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I'm claiming that I that was ever there. Yeah, I guess that's that's that's, that's, that's a big claim. I'm sorry, that's not true. <laughs> Well, we want to appreciate Teen Life and you guys partnering up with us because, I mean, every single day we always want to do a good job in whatever we do. But when we have Teen Life and we have other 
people counting on us, it kind of gives us more of pizzazz to the day. Like, okay, I want to do the best because this team needs help or we can able to donate some more money so we can do more good with teen life. So we appreciate you guys giving us more of a reason to get out of bed. Hmm. Hopefully we can find more, I guess, things to raffle off or get into so we can help you out even more so we have more projects. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate you taking the time to come out here and and hang out. You bet. Great job on the podcast, guys. Y'all are killing it. This is awesome. Thank you, man. (laughs) There's everything about it. We're blushing now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, from the old guy over here. But no, but seriously, this is, y'all are doing incredible work. This is awesome. No, I mean, you guys are really doing incredible work. I'm, it's cool that we get to show up every day. We get to kind of do something that we're passionate about and make cool videos and stuff. But like, yeah, there's a different sense of a uh, purpose when we're like doing a raffle bike video or when we're talking about these things. Cause it's like, oh, this actually is like gonna translate into impact on people's lives yeah. as opposed to just like, oh, it's a 30 second thing that someone watched. Oh, it's like, so cool. Yeah. But no, thank you for the work you're doing, man. So again, could you let everyone know where they should go if they want to become a volunteer and if they want to get to Teen Life in their school? Yeah, absolutely. Teen Life, the NGO, is where you're going to find all of it. There's a, there's a support group tab. It shows all the places we've been. There are actually what we call explainer videos that are a part of that that are two-minute videos that just kind of give you that this is what this is. And it's for community stakeholders. It's for principals. It's for counselors. So if you're like, hey, I want, I've got a school I want to sell this to, we have a video that you can shoot to the principal that's two minutes long that explains it. And so so we're trying to make it where it's as easy as possible for people to understand what we do and how it works in their schools. So that's all right there at Teen Life NGO. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. Everybody, appreciate you guys following along on the podcast. If you have anything, make sure to put your comments down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out teenlife.ngo. That's right. And as always, guys, right on. Thank you, man. Yeah, you bet. Enjoyed it. Oh, great job. I appreciate yeah. you.